Hey, as you've probably seen in some of my other videos, I've used virtual machines before to go through and uh, do setups, walk you through some videos, screencasting things, all that good fun stuff. And I've had some people kind of surprised at what the virtual machines were or didn't even really understand them sometimes. Uh, I've gotten comments like, hey, there's a computer and a computer, what the heck is this? Uh, so... I'm going to show you real quick what virtual machines are and kind of what they do. Um, like I was saying, virtual machines are basically just that, a computer inside a computer. You can actually go through and have your um, Windows XP, so to say, running in Windows Vista, full-fledged Windows XP. Uh, it does everything. It's the actual software. You don't have to worry about compatibility with it, anything like that, because it is Windows XP. Uh, how this works is the virtual machine software is allocating a set of your memory, a uh, set of your processing time, hard drive space, all that stuff uh, for this virtual computer to run inside your computer. Uh, how this works is it has a file for the hard disk itself. Uh, so the hard disk file you see here and it's hard disk IDE that's actually a file sitting on my computer uh, that's not necessarily 20 gigs in size it can actually expand up to a maximum of 20 gigs there uh, that's what I've specified here uh, think of these virtual disks as um, actually going out and buying like let's say a 20 gig hard drive and you know put it into your computer you can't make it bigger than 20 gigs but you can uh, use anything between 0 and 20 gigs. You can allocate as much space as you want for that hard disk. So if I wanted a 10 terabyte hard disk, so to say, I could do that, you know, virtual machine software allowing it, but you can do that. Uh, same thing with the RAM, you can allocate up to, you know, how much is in your system uh, minus what your actual operating system on your computer is using. So Windows 7 is going to use, let's say, 512 megs of RAM. I can allocate out four gigs, you know, uh, about three and a half gigs of RAM to Windows XP. So think of it that way. So let me go through here, show you how to actually create a virtual machine in uh, VMware Workstation here. Uh, you go File, New Virtual Machine. I'm going to do a custom so you can see all the options. Uh, workstation compatibility here. Think of this as like choosing your motherboard for your computer. If you choose something older, you're basically limiting yourself to like a, uh, say like a Pentium 3. Uh, if you go to like a Workstation i, uh, Workstation 6.5 or 7, you're talking about like an Intel i7 kind of capability. Think of things like that. Uh, it tells you all the limitations of each one as you go through it. Uh, maximum size, memory, and uh, processor limits, all that stuff. Uh, I'm going to install the operating system later, but if you choose any of these, it can actually go through and automatically uh, install your operating system if it recognizes it. I always like to be a control freak on installing operating systems and set my own settings. Um, okay, so in here now you can choose basically the operating system. This helps uh, tweak. Uh, some of the settings of the virtual machine itself by default and it kind of is smart enough to pick up and know some of the tools it should use. I'm going to be installing Ubuntu 64 here in a few minutes uh, for a video I'm going to be doing for you. So I want to select that, hit next. If you choose Windows, you can even go back as far as Windows 3.1. Again, you have to actually have the media to do it. So you have to have Windows 3.1 on floppy disks or ISO images uh, to do that. You name your virtual machine, you decide where you're going to store the files for it. Pretty straightforward there. I'm going to allocate only one processor for this. And uh, going to go ahead and say it can use up to two cores of my processor. You can pretty much change whatever you want on there. Um, but I wouldn't really let a virtual machine take more than half your capability away because otherwise it will run a bit slow. And uh, virtual machine memory, I like to do a little bit more than it's recommended. Um, I know this isn't going to need a lot of memory, so I'm just going to go 768.
go to next and then we have our uh, network settings uh, network address translation is what you're going to want to use it's going to make your desktop kind of act like a firewall to the virtual machine itself uh, a router firewall think of it that way uh, if you use bridge it's basically setting it directly on your network there's no protection from um, the virtual machine as far as going through your computer still goes through it but your computer can't really filter it out so to say and then you got host only and uh, do not use a network connection and as far as the adapter types for the hard drives IO all that stuff I just go with the recommended I haven't really noticed any performance difference on choosing anything else uh, then again I don't really do anything processor intensive on these and I want to create a new virtual disk if you already have one that you've downloaded somewhere else you can use that or you can actually use a physical disk uh, so if you buy a 500 gig disk put in your computer you can tell this thing just use it and that's what I'll do I want to just create a virtual disk uh, I can go with a SCSI type that's fine with me and this is what I was talking about with the hard drive earlier I can actually put in here any size I want um, I can tell it to make a 500 gig file if I wanted for the hard disk size but this is basically just like telling or I shouldn't say it's basically the same as installing a physical 20 gig drive so to say in a computer you can't make the drive bigger but you can use less than it so specifying the size here the virtual machine will use up to 20 gigs so if I go through and check this allocate all disk space now it will make a big 20 gig file on my computer if I don't what will happen is as I'm installing the operating system things like that um, the file size will actually grow so it may become 5 gigs it could go 18 gigs and it's not going to be able to get bigger than 20 gigs so think of it that way um, you can split up into multiple files if you got a uh, operating system that has to break it up uh, can't handle larger files or uh, you just want it that convenience of easily moving it so let's go ahead and go to next you name your virtual disk file it by default stores in the same directory as uh, we specified earlier gives us all the good summary of settings and if you want you can go through customize your hardware add more um, stuff I'm not going to use the floppy drive so I'm going to remove that you know sound card puts it on there by default display auto detect you can change where it's going to go to things like that and you can even say if it can detect on power on I can just turn off the sound card if I don't want it on there remove it have it so the sound card only shows up when I tell it to all kinds of good stuff like that so finish and that's it that's how you set up a virtual machine pretty straightforward uh, you can then put in a CD into your computer power on your virtual machine or go through and use an ISO image and the CD drives can take that and it'll start up right off of that uh, ISO image or that CD drive when you hit the power on button there starts it up it'll boot up as you can see that's a uh, its own BIOS there it has uh, I don't have a CD drive in here for um, don't have anything in my CD drive so it's just going on through passing it I uh, couldn't find anything on the virtual disk couldn't find anything in the virtual CD drive so it tries booting off the network which it won't find anything just like a real computer and you can run multiple virtual machines at once so I got the Ubuntu 64 there I can run Google Chrome at the same time Chrome OS as you've seen in my previous video for that and if I want to I can even start up XP and have that run at the same time so it's pretty cool uh, you got control over your operating system just like everything else you got restart you know just the same as hitting your reset button pause button there basically puts your computer to sleep uh, the virtual machine that is and if you hit the big red button there it's the same as just holding your power button and turning it off or plugging unplugging the cable so to say <laughs> so yeah
that's it. Um, that is the uh, summary of virtual machines. And uh, you can go into those BIOSes, change settings in there, just like a normal computer. Pretty limited what you can do there, but that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, found it useful. Um, some virtual machine software you can get. I'm using VMware Workstation on Windows. Um, on the Mac, you can get VMware Fusion. Um, for Windows Server, you can get VMware uh, Server, is actually what it's called. There's another one that's higher end called VMware ESX Server. Uh, VMware Workstation, you're probably looking at about 150 bucks. Fusion on the Mac, about 100. I think it's gone down to 50 bucks. And if you go with the server OS uh, version, it's free, but ESX is not free and is several thousand bucks. So.